So there's a new coronavirus that's been recently discovered. We actually have a number of coronaviruses that have been around for a long time. There are four that circulate in our community all the time, and those coronaviruses generally cause a mild respiratory illness with sniffles and occasionally some cough, and potentially could be worse for people that have underlying lung problems. Uh, but generally, they're common cold type viruses that circulate in the community regularly. This new coronavirus is uh, in the same family and it does seem like it causes more of a pneumonia-like syndrome than what I would call just the sniffles. Although I think it is early yet to draw strong conclusions about uh, how severe it is and how often it's a severe infection. We've had a couple of other coronaviruses over time that seemed like they were worse than our usual cough and cold coronaviruses. One of them was called SARS from the early 2000s. And there was another one uh, called MERS coronavirus uh, about five or six years ago. Both of those um, burnt out after a year or so of circulating. So this new coronavirus we think originated from some human and animal uh, interactions. The virus is one that has a complex genetic structure that can rearrange. And so if it rearranges in the right way with an animal, uh, it's possible to sort of create a new virus. And then if that virus starts to spread person to person, then the virus starts to spread in the population. And so I think uh, in Wuhan, China, where this virus was originally found, uh, th that's what happened. There's people with animals in the marketplace and then it started to, to spread from there. Um, we're still learning, I think, the extent of the coronavirus infection in Wuhan and in China in general. But uh, as we've seen on the news and in scientific reports, um, there's, there's many thousands of people that have been infected. And uh, there's probably many thousands more that had mild symptoms that never sought care. And I think it's a little bit hard to say exactly how, um, how severe of a virus this will end up being as we go forward. There have been several hundreds of cases outside of China at this point from people that had been in China and had traveled. Um, and so far there have been uh, only very few fatalities outside of China. So I think we're still learning a lot about this virus, but uh, it's, it seems like it's a respiratory virus similar to prior coronaviruses, although uh, maybe more of a pneumonia type virus than, than a cough and cold. Most viruses, uh, respiratory viruses, we think spread through, through droplets. So if, if you sneeze, uh, if you cough on your hands and touch a surface, um, if you cough into the air, those droplets generally are thought to sort of float for about five feet before they fall to the ground. and um, coronavirus, there's some question of if those droplets could float farther. And so we are approaching it as if it, it could be that way, although I don't know that we know that for sure. So we think it's a respiratory virus like others where it can spread through the air, through coughing, and then on surfaces. Um, probably from a realistic standpoint, the way most people get infected with this virus is that it's on their hands and then they touch their face uh, and it you know, gets into their mouth. Um, so, so I think the general recommendation in terms of how to prevent this virus is uh, first, if you're sick, you should uh, wear a mask, cover your cough, and you know, stay home if you're feeling sick. And that's true of all viruses, um, respiratory viruses. Uh, but for this virus, we, we think it's probably mostly spread through airborne. Uh, mechanisms, coughing, sneezing, uh, and then maybe on surfaces after that. I think the main symptoms that have been reported so far are general viral illness symptoms like we'd see with influenza or other parainfluenza or coronaviruses, which are uh, fever, a general sense of feeling flu-like, just tired, run down, body aches, and then um, cough. And when people have those, that combination of symptoms, that's what has, has raised, you know, that's sort of the, the, the symptoms that CDC tells us to be watching for in people that have recently returned from that area. 
Uh, like influenza, in some people it seems like those uh, symptoms can then progress and the person can become shortness of breath and develop what looks like pneumonia. And in some people it seems like that pneumonia can then progress to a, a full-on um, difficulty breathing that requires advanced support. And the people that have died from this virus we think have primarily been related to respiratory complications from the virus. Looking at the, the general reports, people can have some vague symptoms also, but the primary symptoms are really uh, fever and respiratory. So right now we have viral swabs for, our, for people's noses. So if somebody comes in uh, from Iowa who has a fever and a cough, um, and if their doctor is worried and feels like a diagnosis needs to be made beyond just a cold virus, which doesn't always even need to be tested, um, we already have a, a swab that looks for about 20 different types of infections. And on that swab is actually the four coronaviruses that circulate in our community already. Unfortunately, that swab does not find this new coronavirus. So the only way to find the new novel coronavirus is by specific testing through the CDC. So to do that testing, we actually have to get CDC's permission to do the test. And um, what they have required is a, a kind of a specific criteria, which is either somebody has to have been uh, in that part of China, Wuhan, China, uh, or the surrounding close area, and has fever and cough, or they have to have had a known encounter with somebody that's diagnosed or is suspected of having coronavirus and has those symptoms as well. So there has to be some contact directly with China or directly with a person that is known to have that virus and symptoms. So uh, for example, you know, being on an airplane recently and not being sure if there could be somebody from another part of the world on that airplane would not meet the criteria for testing. And they've been strict about that criteria and in part that's because as we learn more about uh, this virus and how the test works, the CDC's goal is to test people that are at highest risk. And that is to help them understand better the characteristics of the test. Because sometimes tests can be falsely positive and sometimes tests can be falsely negative. And so if, if they don't take care with who they're testing, then those results can start to be more difficult to interpret. So in general, it's that very specific population of people from that part of China or with a known exposure plus symptoms. I think it's important to say that a lot of people in Iowa have influenza right now. So if we're talking about how do we protect ourselves from viruses, the most important virus to think about right now is influenza. There are no confirmed cases of coronavirus in Iowa, period. There are a few people that are being monitored because they've traveled recently, and there have been two people that have been tested that have tested negative. So as of now, we have no coronavirus in Iowa. So in terms of how to protect ourselves, you know, how do I think about protecting myself from influenza? Um, I think the main thing is hand washing, you know, making sure that we wash our hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based uh, hand cleaner um, at regular intervals, especially if you're having a lot of interaction with other people. Um, and then I think there's a general notion of trying not to touch your face too much, although we humans do that no matter what we do, so, you know, do what you can. Uh, I think more important is um, if you're sick, stay home. You know, don't don't work if you have a fever. Um, don't work if you've got a bad cough, or if you are feeling ill. Um, especially if you're going into a healthcare setting, make sure that you uh, grab one of the masks at the door um, uh, to help not spread that virus. If you're going to cough or sneeze, you know, cover your cough and sneeze to avoid that those droplets going into the air. Um, but right now the CDC does not recommend that we all wear masks. Um, uh, it, it does not recommend any extra measures beyond what we would normally do for influenza, which is cover your cough, stay home if you're sick, wash your hands, uh, and get the flu shot. And you know, even this time of year, you can still get the flu shot if you haven't gotten it. Um, we are still seeing a lot of influenza, uh, both in the clinics and in the hospital, and it's not too late to get a benefit from the flu shot. 
And we actually know that the flu shot carries more benefit if you get it every year. It seems to become more effective if you just continue to, to um, empower that part of your immune system. But as far as this new coronavirus, right now there's no particular precautions recommended by either CDC or Iowa Department of Public Health for Iowa because there's just no coronavirus in Iowa. One thing that people can do is check the Iowa Department of Public Health website for coronavirus. There is a, a, a regularly updated, um, several times a week, tally of how many people are being monitored, how many people have been tested, how many confirmed cases, and any new recommendations for the general public to consider. There's also great resources about frequently asked questions that people in the general public might have, and also great resources for clinicians as well. Uh, in general, if there's any concern about you know, somebody thinking they might have this infection or have been exposed to this infection, or if clinicians have questions about uh, this infection in a patient, um, I've personally talked to the Iowa Department of Public Health several times in the past uh, few weeks as we've done all of our preparation work in case we do start seeing cases here and I found them to be very helpful, uh, very thorough and thoughtful in their assessment. So if somebody has recently traveled back from China uh, as part of a study abroad program or for work um, or just through general immigration, um, there's probably already been some communication with the Department of Public Health already, but if that person were to get uh, symptoms of fever or cough or cold uh, symptoms, the, the most important thing to do would be to call ahead and reach out to their care provider. And it's important to call ahead because we have uh, systems set up here in the clinic um, so that as a patient comes in, they would be able to get a mask, they'd be able to get quickly into a room and be able to be assessed uh, by their care team uh, quickly and in a safe way. Um, so probably if people have questions, the best thing they can do is give their doctor a call. I think the other thing, if, um, if they just have general questions, is considering to go on the Iowa Department of Public Health uh, webpage where there's a lot of good resources available. And I also think that you can call 1-800-362-2736, and this is for the kind of the general public if there's questions about possible coronavirus infection. But I'd say in general, we don't have any cases of coronavirus in Iowa, so the chance of somebody actually being exposed if they haven't traveled, as far as we know, is zero. Um, one thing that's true is that viruses do spread over time, and we've seen that this virus has moved about the world. I think there have been 12 cases confirmed in the United States as of now. And I do think that over time, the chances are is that this virus is going to spread. And we will probably see coronaviruses in Iowa eventually, uh, and we may even see them here in central Iowa eventually. And so I think what we'll continue to need to do is work with Iowa Department of Public Health regarding updates uh, and uh, best care for patients that may have been exposed or may have this virus. And we'll also be uh, looking for more information to be coming from the CDC about testing options. Because as the virus spreads, we won't be able to continue using that criteria of you have to have been in China to have the testing done. And I think as the CDC learns more about the testing parameters of how the test best works, they will start to open up testing options over time. Um, we're just not there yet, in part because we just don't have any cases yet. You know, as far as coronaviruses go, there's no specific treatment. So treatment is what we call supportive. So for common cold coronaviruses, it's just like you would do for the common cold. You would rest, you would hydrate you know, take over-the-counter remedies like Tylenol if you have fever, and then pay attention. And if your symptoms are getting worse over time and turning more into higher fever or cough or chest pain, then, you know, you really need to be evaluated for those types of symptoms. As far as the new novel coronaviruses is concerned right now, there uh, is no specific treatment. It's supportive treatment. Uh, there's also not a vaccine available. There are already studies looking into potential options for treatment, and there are already potential uh, candidates for vaccines that are being developed. Uh, those things do take time, though, to look into and make sure they're being done safely. So I would caution people against um, unproven remedies in terms of virus uh, prevention. If you have questions, you should talk with your doctor. Um, some of those things, you know, might have some 
benefit, but there could potentially be side effects depending on your underlying health conditions. So it's worthwhile talking those things over with your, your medical provider. You know, one thing that's probably worthwhile for people that are planning travel um, for business or otherwise to, especially that part of the world, there are cases through multiple countries through East Asia at this point. And so uh, working with the local travel clinic to find out if there are any new recommendations with regard to specific countries uh, would be worth doing. The CDC is regularly updating travel screenings and travel warnings for people that plan to travel for for business or vacation um, or to see family. So that's something that's that's worth it for people I think to look into as they're planning their travel to see if there's any new alerts or anything coming out about other countries um, you know not in China, Cambodia or Philippines or Japan or, or those places and just working with local travel clinic uh, in preparation for that is probably a good idea. One thing that's important is anytime we're thinking about an outbreak is to balance pragmatism and preparedness with calm. You know, we have a great healthcare system here in our community. We have doctors that are trained for these situations and we have people that are trained specifically for outbreak situations. And so we work with Departments of Public Health and the National CDC to, to be ready. And as this um, new infection outbreak continues to develop, as we learn more, you know, we'll be sharing more information as well with people. And certainly if, um, if we do start to have cases here, um, there's a great healthcare team available for people. So I would just really reassure people that, um, you know, I think they can take confidence that there's a good team uh, available to them. I think the other thing is that uh, in terms of the other side of that equation, that calm side of the equation, um, there's a lot of people that travel a lot of places in the world. And I think, um, I think the key is to not overreact as we're getting um, information about an outbreak like this. It's easy to see numbers on the news uh, and become really concerned about that and, and certainly all those ill people, our hearts and prayers go out to them. While at the same time I think we can respect and, and not uh, need to isolate our friends and community members that, um, you know, have ties to that part of the world. Um, you know, they may be worried about their family and uh, they may not have spent any time there at all and I think you know, there's, there's no reason that we need to treat any of our community members any differently than we otherwise would. We don't have any coronavirus here now, and um, I, I just think if it comes, it comes, and, and people will be okay. We'll, we'll take care of it if it comes, and um, for now, influenza's here, <laughs> and uh, get your flu shot, and if you feel sick, stay home from work, because it's probably not coronavirus, it's probably influenza.